out here at Impressions in Long Beach. I'm here with my buddy Tyler. How you yes. doing? I'm doing great, Justin. Tell us a little bit about your shop and yourself and yep. uh, yeah, your story. Yeah, man, we're located uh, just about two and a half hours east of Oklahoma Share Company. We're in Northwest Arkansas, uh, Bentonville, Fayetteville, that area. Yeah. So kind of the, well, Walmart land. Walmart land, but mountain bike land too. Lots mountain, of bike riding. Big right? into mountain biking. Okay. Uh, and that's actually a big piece of business for us. So like we're heavy in the outdoor space, uh, particularly in NICA, which is student mountain biking. So uh, we do merchandising for 11 different mountain bike leagues across the country. Wow. Uh, super fun. Uh, we're heavy in like the coffee and beer space like that. Um, started about 14 years ago right here in Southern California, but I was from Arkansas, so I ended up moving back there a few years ago. Uh, gosh, have just uh, seen like steady, healthy growth since then, which has been nice. Uh, moved into a couple buildings here and there, and we just bought a new building, getting ready to move into a nice, nice facility, so we're excited about that. Yeah, that's a big deal. I know. Yeah, I, I, I'm very excited. Oh. So do you, do you think when you look at this building or when you found the building, yeah. did you think about what your business was today and how it's gonna fit or you, were you thinking about your business for next year or five years from now or is, do you have room to grow or yeah. what's the, how'd you make that decision? That's such a big decision. Well, yeah, I mean, cause we moved, we moved into our current building uh, right, out, right out five years ago this spring. And I remember the day we moved in, our creative director, our director Kyle and my wife Allison, who's the co-owner of the business, she, she runs the damn thing. It's not my, I don't run it. Um, but uh, I remember moving in on day one and Kyle looking at me and going, it's not big, it's not big enough. And I was like, what? We're already out of space. We're good, man. We, Cause we went from 2,500 to 7,000 square feet. We're like, this is all the space we need. Ever. Ever, forever. No, nope. we were, I was wrong 18 months later. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so with this one, you know, we, we bought land early during the pan early during COVID. We bought land because we were going to build a building. Yeah. Well, in the six months it took to get plans drawn up and get things working on and everything, all of a sudden the cost of building went from like a million and a half for twenty thousand square feet to three and a half. Yeah. It was it was untenable, like not doable. So it would been, it would have been foolish because then we would have gotten to that. Then we just hit a debt spiral. It would have been like, well, we need more space. Now it's more debt, more debt, more debt. So we actually went and looked at this building. So I, we own the land. That's unfortunate, but we're going to sell it. Um, and so we had actually looked at this building a couple times. It was an old, like, homeschool curriculum building, but also they make garage doors there and yeah. ladies' pantyhose over time. So, like, lots of uses, right? <laughs> It's, it was a wild place. Uh, and so I took my team back and I said, hey, we need to go back and look at this. It went back on the market um, because it's it's a large warehouse. It's about 57,000 square feet. Um, but it's not good for modern warehousing because modern warehousing needs 15, 20, 25 foot sidewalls. This has 13 foot ceilings. Yeah. So people were putting it under contract, getting in it, figuring out it wasn't gonna work and dropping contract. So yeah, we so we so I took my team in there and I said, I think we can make this work. We can use the first 20 to 25,000 square feet we can lease out some space in the back yeah. to other people that yeah. effectively pays for the building. Yeah. So there's all, you know, we've got like garage door companies again, again. <laughs> back in the building. We've got, you know, electricians, HVAC people. Uh, and they that just are, have slips. Like you. Yeah, like little, like, little, like, uh, like 2,400 square foot spots. They can drive their vehicles right in the building. Yeah. They rent space from us. It pays for the building. So then TC gets cheap, very cheap rent. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, that's what we do. And it's, it's, we're really like what's nice about it now is now when if if we want to expand more, uh, I don't have to go to the bank. I can just go to my bank account, and I can say, all right, we got another ten thousand foot behind this wall. Paint, HVAC, electrical. Let's go. Um, versus you know taking out another million and a half dollar loan to build another warehouse and add on. We can just and hopefully this is it. Like it came with seven acres too. So we've got space if we wow. ever had to add on, but right now I'm like, I think we're gonna have enough space. How's the location? You like the location? I, I mean, it's tucked away, yeah. but um, we're okay with that. Sure. Like, um, the majority of our clients don't walk in the front door. Like, it's... Do you ship a lot, or do they ship deliver? A lot, ship a lot, largely referral-based too, so okay. people that like, want to find us, right? Yeah. So it's, which I, I prefer, like I, we love walking, we love serving the local community. It's tucked away, it's not on any main road, it's kind of back by the, it's literally by the railroad tracks. Um, and so it's it's uh, it's gonna work out really well, especially for the future of the type of business we've been doing. Uh, because walk-in business is good, there's nothing wrong with it, 
But a lot of times, if you're focused on like full merchandising for companies and stuff, walk-in walk -in business can, can kind of be a drag. Sure. Um, well, it slows you down. It's yeah. interruptive. It stops everybody's processes. Yeah. I mean, it's good. You yeah, got to so take care of them. But. We still will employ people for walk-in business, but not as many people as we would if we were on a major thoroughfare. So it, uh, it, it feels like a, a smarter spot for us based on our business mix. So screen printing, um, how many autos do you have? Just bought a third one yesterday. Congra so. Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. At the show? At the show. Well, yeah. Congratulations. It's, it's that whole thing. It's like, you buy it at the show. And I'm like, I don't care where we buy it. No, it's convenient. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, What'd you get? Uh, we got a 14 color Cobra TSE, which Woo! they should be calling the King Cobra. Missed opportunity, m and um, I don't know why they're not. But, uh, yeah, so we uh Cobra TSE. Uh, dual heat zone dryer and we got the dual heat zone because we want to prep for adding hybrid in the future yep. kind of when that we're gonna we're kind of waiting for the next second second iteration. generation yep. yeah um <coughs> rumor yep. is it's going to go from a four color to a six color system so you'll be able to get pantones colors a little better a little more vibrant neons uh, yeah ne well yeah those neons is a big part neons and just anything tough. in the pantone book for our big clients yeah get tired of mixing ink. It's not hard, but you get tired of it. Yep. So we did that, uh, got a hold of a rinse out, a uh, new exposure system. Yesterday? And we You dropped some coin, bro. Well, someone dropped some coin. I hope someone bought you dinner last night. I, they did, actually. That's <laughs> odd. Uh, no. uh, and then uh, switching over to a different reclaim system. So we're moving, uh, we're going to move over to the blue water system. With these ones. So we're really... What do you have currently? Uh, we're on a Lotus Holland. Okay. Uh, it's been great. Uh, and uh, Rock has been great. Like the whole Lotus team has been great. Uh, we just needed some, we were having to do a little too much after the fact. Uh, like with chemistry or maintenance? Or yeah, like hazing and yeah, stuff. That. Like we, d we do a lot of uh, water base, so you deal with uh, dyeing of the mesh a little more, yeah. so you gotta work with it. So the blue water solves a little more of that. So we're okay. gonna be stepping over blue water, uh, which we're all using, oh, already using easiest way, easiest way chemicals, that's what it's called, right? It is the easiest way. Easy way chemicals. Uh, no, so yeah, we're, we, we bought a bunch of new stuff, but we got space to put it now. That's, like what we're most excited about right now is that we can say yes to a lot more. So, like uh, a client uh, called and said, hey, we don't need you to print this stuff, but we need to onboard some stuff from Malaysia. Can you take a 40 foot container for us and just onboard it and redistribute it for us? Because their warehouse is full and we're like, yeah. And so we took, we already had the logistics team. Now we have the space. So 864 boxes later, it's sitting in our warehouse and it will be gone in three months. So it's, it's like fill in the gaps during slow times of year. Absolutely. Yeah, take on projects that aren't outside of your wheelhouse, right? Like we, we're shipping garments. It's all garments. Uh, we're just not having to print anything on this stuff. That's right. Yeah. Embroidery, you mess with embroidery? We do. Uh, 16 heads of embroidery. Um, and then uh, we have a sewing department too, so we do all the finish work, all like the trim, like woven labels and stuff. Uh, we do patch sewing, so we actually sew on patches or seat pressing. Post stitcher. Uh, a couple post beds, man. Uh, and they're the, the folks best. that run that it's are the great. only way. We also are like getting into a little bit of like World War II era like vintage chain stitch machines. Which Dude, are I love super it. fun. Those right? buffalo chip yeah. things, that's yeah. the heat. I'm all about it. So chain we have stitch. we have two of those now. And we're doing, it's a special project. It's not like listed on services on the website. Um, but some of our vendors are like these like little boutiques and stuff. And they will like have our team out to do live chain stitching versus, you know, screen, live screen printing or any of that. But we're also doing special projects for people. Uh, you know, a, lot, a lot of times my clients like uh, work with like lead denim and they'll want to do a special yeah. gift for someone. And they'll send us a jacket, we'll stitch on the bags. And, uh, I'm gonna like, send you a jacket. Please do. For some chain please stitching. do. Maybe for Jack too. Like, <laughs> That's the look. Yeah. Uh, digital world printing uh, or running a couple GTXs. Okay. Um, so uh, for now or forever. Well, I mean, the hard part with the GTXs is they just won't die. Never. Like I've never. Good machines. Like I'm not even selling the machines for. Like they keep Good calling machines. us going. Do you guys want to get the Pro V? Do you want to get the new 600? And I was like, yeah. Well, the original two GTX we have just they're not keep going cooking. down. They keep cooking. Um, we are looking into like. Uh, just that Firebird Milo washing system where you can get uh, Oh, the pre-treater where you wash yeah, yeah. So we do enough with a couple of larger clients that have come back and said, we love DTG, we're able to do 40, 50 pieces full color. And they're coming back to us going, but you know, like we, don't want, we don't want to know that it's digital and pre-treats the giveaway, right? Yeah. So we're looking into that system to service a couple of our larger clients on the West Coast. 
So it's something we looked at today. It's, what it's about not bad. what about those shirts that you can buy that are ready to print, like that have been previously pre-treated? Yeah. Do you have you found success with those? We've we've found a couple. There's just it's the world's not deep enough yet for yeah. that. So it's like yeah. we have this. What do you have? Well, we have carded cotton in six colors. Yeah. Well, like yeah. Dis Disney and Fox want yeah. 47 color options. Yeah. And then, and and it, none of them are available, and they want the soft, lightweight stuff. Yeah. So. So I think, I think there's a market for it for sure, and the price points are right. Like yeah. five and six bucks a shirt, already pre-treated. The labor savings alone is good. So we we bought like the Sandmar, what's like the fully pre-treated tribe lens. We yeah. use those for a few clients. Uh, there's a few more here today that we're gonna check out and get samples from. So. Cool. Uh, DTF on the radar. Uh, and we order all. Yeah. We probably order as much. Same. As, like yeah. it's a lot. We order a lot of it. I think it's. Uh, I, th I don't think it's a magic bullet. I think it's a, it's a tool, and it's a pretty great tool, yeah. especially on stuff like this, like on polyesters, on rain jackets, on that kind of stuff. It's like, well, it's way better than doing like print cut vinyl, right? right? Uh, holds up better, looks better. Um, yeah, we use it a lot. I I'm kind of waiting for one of the big companies to. Pledge allegiance. I want Brother to come out with a machine. Sure. I, I mean, Roland has a small one, but it's kind of a hobby. Like it's yep. a, it's based on the BN20. It's real small. Yep. Um, I want. A commercial machine that has a good warranty that's supported Parts. by someone that I recognize. Yep. So M and R's got one in their booth today. It's not. It's not. It's not M and R equipment. And I, I, I love M and R, and we will buy M and R equipment. <laughs> that makes sense. No, I'm with it. Yeah. I'm with it. Yeah. Uh, 2023. What are you looking out for? Are you like new processes? Are you? Do you have concerns about the economy? Or are you guys changing anything about your business? Or are you just? Full steam ahead. Yeah, I mean, straight up, Q4 was soft for us. I don't know. I've, we've, I've talked to you a little bit. Like, it wasn't bad. It was just soft. And uh, we kind of took that as a little like, okay, let's just pay attention. Uh, talking to people in like other segments of business. I know you're involved in multiple business segments. Like, they're all saying what I've heard consistently is the same thing. They're like, don't get bogged down in your numbers this year. Uh, compare it to 2019. Okay. Because the last three years is wild west. Well, and, and like. Yeah, maybe we, we grew, y'all grew, like we, we grew, but they said don't compare this year to last year because now we're kind of rolling out of the COVID era, if, if you will. And they said, compare your numbers to pre-COVID numbers. I like that a lot. And like build off of that. Don't get, because you know, all the fundraising stuff that happened during COVID, all yeah. the brands or businesses that leaned into merchandising heavily because they were doing that because they didn't have the traffic in their stores, right? So the coffee companies that did massive branding and like you know we're putting out roscoe's chicken roscoe's waffles chicken. putting out it's giant jackets it's probably made in 2019 2020 right it's very cool it looks good um no but uh they may not be into that because people are coming back in their businesses they're going to refocus on their bread and butter they're going to refocus on uh the making of of their product <laughs> not other products so they'll they'll focus on coffee and beer and food whatever they're into that's that's kind of like the thinking is that's really smart so I, so not getting worried about it I like, love that I haven't heard anybody suggest that and I, I, I that might be one of my better takeaways from the show there just you. going back and coaching my team like we're gonna look let's not go all in but let's compare to 2019 and yeah. let's prepare it like there was a gap there were three years let's pull it out and this is yeah, looking forward yeah, if, like you, if you shrink to beyond behind 2019 levels start making some like structural changes right like that would that indicate a number of things. That would probably indicate some kind of recession. Yeah. However deep that goes, double different, whatever we're whatever we're talking about. But yeah. like, that's what we're doing. Is we're just comparing to 2019 and going like, what does healthy growth look like for us? How do we keep our processes super efficient? How do we just keep our people healthy and happy? Like that is that's my wife and I, Allison. She she runs the company. She's around here somewhere. She does not like doing this kind of stuff. Um, that's what we're focused on. Is is growing a healthy company. The new space alone, just the space it will give our people. Like our creative team ha has a creative department now, and they have like a lounge that they can hang out in once we move. And we're, I'm just, I'm looking forward to making a place that people are excited to work at and like want to be for a while. I love that. Yeah, turnover is nonsense. <laughs> Dude, well, thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to hanging out, spending some more time together. But yes, thank you for definitely. sharing. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Thank you guys.